Hello, hope this video finds everyone well this Monday morning, if you get a chance to watch it on Monday. Hey, I am going to give a quick update on things thus far uh, in the semester. So far, uh, we will not be having the video conferencing. The uh, video conferencing idea was defeated on the online survey that we took last week. Not everybody participated in the survey, but uh, majority of folks that did uh, said that they would rather keep it uh, like it is, uh, just a, a, a typed feedback between you and I. So uh, one of the things that I will say that uh, I will encourage and that I will continue to do is I'll continue to provide uh, videos, hopefully each week, uh, back and forth because it is it has been shown that Learning is quickest and uh, most powerful when you can involve multiple senses. So rather than just reading and then typing back your understanding, seeing, hearing, smelling, touching, tasting, feeling, uh, the material makes it stick a little bit longer and makes a deeper impact. So I'll continue to do these um, hopefully each week. I'm not going to promise I will every week, but this is a this is a big week for us because we are discussing child trauma, and so in my experience, uh, starting in 2000 uh, all the way up until today, there can be no bigger determination determining factor for adolescent behaviors, adult behaviors adult development, child, adolescent development, there is no bigger singular factor than adverse childhood experiences. And so this week is uh, we're focusing on trauma. Uh, traumas can be considered adverse childhood experiences. And the reason being is because our research now shows that when children and adolescents, uh, the videos I posted, a lot of them focus in on uh, very young uh, childhood uh, development. It, it really it, it's immaterial. Uh, it's it's it seems to be more pervasive when really negative events happen in very early childhood. Although it can happen in late childhood, early adolescence, late late adolescence. Regardless, that that doesn't matter because our brain continues to grow. Uh, we continue to gain a proliferation of neural trans, uh, uh, of new connections in our brain uh, all the way up until we're 25. Now that doesn't mean you can't teach an old dog new tricks. That doesn't mean once you're 25 all your learning is done. Now you can learn but your your brain in effect it's it's genetically predetermined uh, growth spurts uh, it's not fully developed until you're 25. So the, the last part of the brain to develop is the the prefrontal cortex, which is really our higher level thinking, thinking, reasoning, uh, what really helps us navigate through abstract concepts. So if you're an undergraduate and you're 20, 21 years old, um, be coddling, be very uh, cognizant that your brain is still undergoing massive, uh, massive growth, especially the, the very front frontal cortex. And so there is uh, a lot of potential for for new learning and, and development. So if you're like me and you uh, engaged in extracurricular activities in college as an undergraduate, you may be stunting some of that growth. So if you have a hard time understanding me or, or think that, oh gosh, that guy doesn't know what he's talking about, then I'm going to blame my, my very late uh, adolescent uh, years into my early 20s. So anyway, that being said, uh, I do I, and I, I believe research backs this up now. Research is showing that uh, the more that your you undergo toxic stress, continual accumulative traumas, uh, it impacts brain development. It it stunts. It, it literally stunts. You can go in and and take an fMRI, do some brain imaging, and see areas of the brain that are smaller in people that have had significantly traumatic. Uh, experiences in their lives versus people who have not. 
So uh, the impact of this it cannot be understated. Honestly, it cannot be understated. Uh, so the, I'm glad that our text tackles this very early on. I've given you a lot of resources this week, again, because I'm very passionate about this topic. I am trained in one of the techniques to help treat child trauma, that being uh, trauma-focused cognitive behavioral therapy, or TFCBT. So um, take a look at the videos. Uh, look through them. Uh, hopefully the, they'll help you understand uh, some of the basics. I, I think that we could spend an entire semester talking about uh, the effects of child trauma and also ways of, of treating them. So one of the big topics that I've introduced is, is called resilience. And so there are some videos regarding resilience. One of the things that helps to instill resilience is your actual treatment modalities, the evidence-based practices that your textbook is looking at. So um, we're dealing with chapter three. And so where it talks a lot about trauma-focused care. And so not only TFCBT, but also ARC, Attachment, Self-Regulation, and Competency, uh, Trauma Affect re Regulation. Your text mentions EMDR, uh, Eye Movement Desensitization Reprocessing. That's an effective technique for people who absolutely cannot talk about cannot process their traumas. Um, and so sometimes things have happened that are so unspeakably bad uh, to individuals, to children, that they cannot talk about them. So uh, this does not require, this technique does not require a, an in-depth narrative. That's, that's what uh, TFCBT is built upon, is, is talking about what happened and taking the the fear and the and the fight versus flight automatic uh, reaction and taking that away. So EMDR is able to do that without having a person produce a narrative of their of their trauma. So um, has been shown to be effective. Uh, quite a few more. So use that. I've also put on a a website, the National Child Traumatic Stress Network. It's very robust, a huge website, a lot of resources. So there, there's a lot of things to look at if you're interested in the topic. Even as you graduate from this class, move on, it will give you ideas. It will give you resources for parents, for adolescents, for children, as you work with people that have been through very negative experiences. Also talks a lot about um, you know even being a first aid, uh, a psychological first aid responder to disasters like you know a, a, a tornado or a fire or you know things like that things of that nature where you're able to you know come in and and provide the proper care to people so it's a really really good website um, there are, there are tons of resources out there if you have questions please feel free to email me um, I, I do feel confident that I can lead you in good directions with this topic so uh, that being said I'll, I'll leave the video here let me make sure I I, uh, I got to everything that I wanted to discuss with you. Um, I will say this before I leave. Uh, for those of you that are looking to be in, in helping professions, th those of you that have looked into the, the ACE study, Adverse Childhood Experiences study, uh, and the 10, 10 categories that that looks at, uh, one of the things is it doesn't really necessarily look at the death of a parent or a significant um, a significant accident, say a bike accident or a car accident that a, that a child lives through. And so, so there are other traumatic events that the ACE that I would criticize the ACE study for that it's not it's not inclusive enough. It's only just looking at um, a lot of factors that had to do related to your caregiver, and so you can have other adverse childhood experiences that are not necessarily related to your parents or your caregivers. Uh, that would be. Uh, a criticism that I would have that you could actually throw in a, a couple more categories. Um, but I will say that if you're looking at helping people, uh, you ha have a tendency to have a higher uh, rate of ACEs. In other words, your ACE score would be higher than the general population. And the reason being is that those of us in helping professions often have experienced bad things and then also have found ways of being resilient, found ways of overcoming, and also feel compelled and led to help others that have been through uh, particularly negative circumstances in childhood. So 
don't feel alone and also don't feel like this is very stigmatizing. Uh, the one thing that I will say, uh, if, if those of you watched the, the whole like ACE video, which is very long that I, that I published uh, online for, for this class, as, for another class, but it, it also it applies for this one too, is childhood development. So for us to understand uh, adolescence, we have to understand what got us there, what got people there to adolescence. So um, I will say that uh, we each of us have our own internal strengths that have led us here. I, I, there are some four internal characteristics by Bernard that are listed to help us uh, become resilient, along with several other external factors, which is where the Harvard videos really go. But please know that all of this, all of this together helps to build resilience. Uh, but also know that uh, if, if uh, the most, even the most significantly negative cases where the trauma is horrible that children have been through, if that child, in my experience, has just one, one caring adult, one compassionate adult that's there regardless through thick and thin and shows support and love and compassion uh, unconditionally, that those do have good outcomes. And so the ones, the, the folks that don't have good outcomes are typically the children who have no one, who have no uh, caring, compassionate adult that's, that, that stands there through thick and thin by them. So uh, be aware of that. Uh, so there's two, there's two things. The, the Harvard studies really focus on uh, preventative aspect, prevention, and then the treatment modalities that we discuss in our, in our books. That's... Uh, that's coming back on the back end after tr trauma has happened and making a difference through treatment. So I know this is a little bit longer video, but I wanted to give kind of a synopsis of where we are. Please know I'm still grading uh, our, our discussions, and many of you do not have your grades back, but I'm, I'm working on it, and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll get those back very soon. So uh, have a good week. Uh, please contact me via email if you have any questions, and um, I will see you online. See ya.